Hey guys, Lindy Pearson here. My husband and I work with a great firm called Cressa, also our sponsor for this episode. We're a commercial real estate firm, but unlike most firms in our industry, we only work for the tenants. We help business owners and C-level executives make better real estate and facility decisions while saving them money in the process. So welcome to Level Up, guys, where we feature entrepreneurs, leaders, other professionals who have demonstrated agency and innovation in their personal and professional lives. So today's guest is a superstar in the speaking business, keynoting with celebrities for audiences of thousands. She is now a speaker coach for business owners and TED Talkers. She's created speeches for executives, entrepreneurs, and sales staffs. She's had 15 speakers to date on the TEDx stage, quite the accomplishment. And before starting her speaking and coaching business, she was human, re human resources trainer with Walt Disney Company, Northrop Aircraft, and Rockwell International. She's on her fourth book, a latest one being Pitch Perfect, Speak to Grow Your Business in Seven Simple Steps. When Mimi speaks, people listen, they laugh, and they learn. Please help me welcome Miss Mimi Donaldson. Hi, Mimi. Hi, thank you so much. Yeah, pleasure having you here today. So I know in some of the things you've said, you help people find their voice. You, you claim their power with their words. You said you've helped them find the funny since we must entertain and educate. Obviously you love what you do. Tell us more. Tell us more because I love to see when people light up when they're passionate and you know exactly what you're doing. Oh, well, after all these years, I keynoted for about 30 years. And then wow. in the keynoting thing for the big companies, all my friends and people I would meet say, could you help me with my speech? And I would help them because I learned from big audiences and small that there's a certain way people want to hear it. Yeah. And there's a certain way that you're talking where people are smiling and nodding because they're getting it because it's logical. And yeah. then there's another way that you put a word salad together and people go, huh? Wait, what'd she say? I call that audience whiplash. Ooh. And they go, what? Doesn't you sound don't want fun. that. <laughs> you don't want that. No, you want people. So my whole life is devoted to people finding out and learning their own personality on how to get across what they want to get across in a logical manner that's really authentic. It's really them. So that people will smile and nod and at the end of the speech will give you applause or say the magic five words for the business mm -hmm. owner, which is, I think I need you. Right. Well, what about, you know, you, you have people who can, and I've definitely done this before, who just do like wordsmith something and, you know, you write, you write a bio and, and you include all this, but to really, to really feel it. What are, what are some of the things you've seen happen there? Ah, uh, this is so, such a great question. I've never been asked it quite that way. Um, people ask, do you work with delivery skills and when I should breathe and how I should use my hands? And I go, no. No, not at all. It's all about the passion, the energy. Energy is your superpower when you're speaking. And it's in your eye contact and in your voice. Yeah. And your hands will just do what they do if you have enough energy here and here. Right. So I know that you've had a lot of experience. You said we won't count numbers. But, Ooh, it's good though. <laughs> but now we're talking about COVID and now we're talking about today and we're talking about things that have happened in the past, different patterns that happened over decades. And now we're here. We're 2D. We're on Zoom. We're on whatever platform that oh. you're using. And how in the heck do you stand out? I mean, besides lipstick and earrings, we need, we need to have a little more substance. <laughs> exactly. Well, lipstick and earrings, earrings, as long as they're not big chandeliers and move and sparkle and get distracting the audience. But the whole thing about Zoom or visual platforms is that that's your only audience is that little white light. And it's really disconcerting to lots of people, including me, who made her living by watching the audience yeah. and responding to them. But you got to learn how to do it. You got to cut out the ums 
You got to be even cleaner. You got to be more prepared. It, people aren't going to cut you any slack. They're not there. You can't pat them on the back. You can't elbow them and you can't make nice. It's all here and here and there. What about um, Toastmasters? Toastmasters is something that's been a buzzword for some of my other networking groups that I belong to. And, um, you know, they have different divisions and yes. you really get a great a great um, adventure there of, you know, your journey from beginning to end. Because I remember my first experience at a round table, I was thinking to myself, how do all these people do this? I mean, I, I can say 50,000 yeah. things and just bore the heck out of people. <laughs> Um, you know, like, cause you know, commercial real estate isn't exactly that sexy of a business and you gotta like keep it fresh. And, and so how, how do you differentiate really yourself? Funny. Because I, I, I see a huge difference. Yeah. Well, Toastmasters is the thing you do after you work with me Okay. So, <laughs> because, or you did it before you work with me, but they don't help you write your speech. Okay. Toastmasters is simply you get up in front of the room and different, they give you different time. You know, you have 30 seconds, you have a minute, you have five minutes, whatever it is. And then you present to a live group, which is fabulous experience. And then they give you feedback and that's terrific, but they don't help you write your speech. And as I said, it has to be really prepared. The fabulous, the only fabulous thing about Zoom is that you can have notes right under the camera and no one can see Perfect. that I'm looking at my notes. That's the good thing. That's the only, that's the only good thing I can find, but you have to have a prepared speech and Toastmasters is great. In fact, I was the keynote speaker for the, for the national Toastmasters conference. There were thousands of people there and they introduced me with, I was, doing my keynote career was about maybe 10, 20 years ago. And they said, okay, people, our, our keynoter is the where you want to get to. A lot of you want to get to this point. Here she is. And she, they introduced me, meet me down. Oh, cool. so it was, it was so cool that I was kind of like, oh, some people want to be professional speakers, but the people I work with mostly, uh-uh, they don't want to be speakers. They're CEOs. They were, they're good at business. But, right. but when it comes to talking about their business, they're not as in love with talking about it as they are with their business. My phrase is, I want you to love talking about your business as much as you love your business. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah, because you know what? It's a difference. You, you see people's face light up. You know, they, they, they all of a sudden forget that their hands are all crazy and where are they looking and going there? They, they know it, they feel it. They live it. Every Your day. hands will only come up if your energy, if you're sitting like this and your energy is down and you're not making eye contact. If you try right. to use your hands, it looks stupid, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So not it's all motivated by this and this. That's all you have to think about. What are three keys to being a successful speaker? Three oh, keys. Three. Oh, three. Oh, I know one right now. Okay, I have to pick from like 60. But three, number one, I always tell people, if they're not going to remember anything else from anything of my presentation, is lead with the need. In other words, people are looking up at you the question in their thought bubble, you know, like in the cartoons, the question is, <laughs> yeah. wh why should I listen to you? What's in it for me? And here's the other visual, since we're visual, picture they have their arms crossed if they're not sophisticated enough to pretend they're interested. Their arms crossed, they're looking at you sideways, mm -hmm. and they're really saying, so why should I listen to you? What's in it for me? You better lead with their need. You better interest them with the first couple sentences of something they can go, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there you go. And we all do it on our websites. You lead with the problems. Do you have a problem? Da, 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 da. Right. But when we get up to speak, we go, hello, I'm Mimi Donaldson. And let me tell you my story. <laughs> no, no, they're not interested yet. Yes. Okay. Number one. Yet. Number two. Oh gosh, you're making me do only three oh, out of. Oh, by the way, this is this what? is not set in stone. This is just for today. This is just okay. I know. Okay. I love it. I'm recreating, recreating newly. Okay. Um, 
The second thing I think would be just the way you taught me today. You, you gave me a phrase called social chameleon. Yeah, I love that. And I think that's the second thing is that you have to know your audience. You have to know if you're speaking to retail people, they don't want aerospace examples. Mm -hmm. I learned the hard way because my HR experience was in aerospace. And the only examples I had were aerospace <laughs> examples. And then I was talking to a big retail firm and I had to do a lot of what we call needs analysis right. to find out, wait, what are their needs? What are their problems? What are their situations? It's not the same. Every And you can tell if the speaker is talking to a different audience, like, wait, who is she thinking about? Because she's certainly not talking to me. So that whole thing about being um, doing your research and being a social chameleon, I love that. And so I think that's step number two. And the third one I just thought of, of right now dun, is dun, what dun, I've been dun. saying. Da -da. But we can put it in a principle because I've been saying it. Energy is your superpower. Mm. And on two dimensions or three dimensions in person, you need to have more energy than anyone else in the room. You are the most energized and excited about your topic than anyone in the room. Because, as I say, nobody's going to be more excited about your topic than you are. Yeah. So you mm -hmm. better, and it's a constant stream of energy. It's, you have to have sustaining. It's like running a marathon, which I ran. It's not sprinting. It's, you have to really conserve the energy and push it out little by little and don't run out. What, what happens, let's just say, let's just hypothetically say that the world is amazing and we're all back doing events and in-person engagements. And your audience is just kind of meh. Um, and you're only a quarter of the way through and you're thinking, okay, what mm -hmm. in the heck is happening? Like what, what, what if you're not getting that engagement? What, what's a, a good follow-up? Especially if you're so like hard. in your head. You're in your head. You're in your head. Okay, you're in your head. Okay, well, that has happened to me, obviously. And the first thing I the first time it ever happened to me. I learned because they're paying me big money. They were paying me big money to do a keynote. Now, the mistake on my part, and you always have to look, how am I responsible for this, right. is that I didn't prepare enough. I didn't know the audience. The, uh, I didn't know what they were facing, which was actually layoffs and pink slips, we used to call them. And it was really bad. And, the, and just talking to the bosses who hired me didn't do it. They didn't tell me everything. Right. So yeah. what you know very well through real estate, which I never did until I experienced this horrible thing, is that I actually have to talk to the audience participants before the speech even to find out what are their needs, problems, situations, what do they expect from the speech? Because it's all about expectations in yeah. any business. Yeah. It's all about meeting expectations. You could be the best speaker in the world. And if they expected a speech on time management and you're there to give them a speech on managing people, uh-uh. They're yeah, not liking them. you. You lost them. They're, uh, you, they're not liking you. Yeah. So mm. that's that's preparing. But you're asking me this horrible question about what do you do in the middle? <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, this happens. This is this is a real life question where all of a sudden you start sweating bullets and you're like, OK, I'm losing them, especially okay. again, when you have all these tiles in front of you. Uh, for one thing, you're never going to do that after the first time no. because you're going to prepare better. But if you're in the middle of it, I remember saying to myself, you are not going to die. This will be over. Like there, <laughs> I know that's not very comforting to your audience, but that's if you're in the middle of it, really, there is nothing you can do. I mean, in the old movies, they would maybe take out their cane and top hat and do a little tap number. You can't do that. Yeah, no, that's not going to happen now. That's not going to happen. So you have to just do the best you can. Don't lose your cool. I mean, after 20, the first 20 years, I actually could actually say, wait a minute, 
what's going on here? Did I lose you? I could say that, but that takes so much guts. So much guts. Chutzpah. Oh. A lot of chutzpah. Chutzpah, baby. So talking about a little bit of fear and a little bit of, you know, going into a situation with maybe not all the facts, whether you prepared or not, whatever's going on. Let's just say you're, you know, crossed all your T's and dotted all your I's. You know, there's there's still fear. I know you've you've been working on a project to have some online modules, and it's been a little bit of personal and professional setbacks. And it's like you know, there's a struggle. There's a struggle. The struggle is real. You're like hustling. You're giving advice, and you're also feeling things. Things are are coming up. So I'd like to hear a little bit about this video project that you've been working on, and maybe you can tell us you know, some more helpful hints that, that would, that would help our listeners as, as you got through this. Well, one of the favorite topics of mine to speak on is stress. And I actually wrote a book called bless your stress. It means you're still alive, which is like a matter of perspective. Cause you'd rather be in a traffic jam than in a hospital bed. Right. But the thing about stress and fear is that you can't let it get you. What was your question again? I forgot it. I love you. I forgot your question. So with you with you having this online. Oh, gosh. It's so funny. I blocked that out. It was supposed to be done in uh, February. Now, if I, I teach in stress management, Murphy's Law, everything takes longer than you think. Nothing is as simple as it seems. Yeah. So you have, if anything can go wrong, it will. Those are three. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yes, I've so been if there you too. If, if you pretend that's not true, no, you you can't do that. So no I am the kind of person who doesn't want one typo in the presentation deck for my oh. video course. Of course, oh, there can't be. I was an English major. There cannot be. So it is taking longer than I thought, but too bad. It's got to be perfect. I mean, really perfect. And it's exciting because I taped it in October, like I was doing the keynotes. So I take like three to five minutes at a time and people download the presentation deck and I'll, I'm funny because I've done this 50,000 times. And then I say, okay, turn to your worksheet. Let's write step one. What is the audience's need? What is the problem you're addressing? Da, 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 da. And then we do steps one through seven. And at the end, they learn how to handle questions and answers. We learn how to handle hecklers. Oh, I really, I really like that. How to, how to, how to handle answers and questions. Rebuttals uh, are probably number one on my list. Um, wow. I can, I can talk till the cows come home, but when, when there's specific real estate rebuttals, I find oh. myself having to say, I don't know right now. I can. I can check on this. Um, you know, I'm also doing this with my husband who has 30 years experience in the industry. So I don't, I don't have to know everything. Like I exactly. have, I have him. And so sometimes with the rebuttals, I can kind of get tripped up in my head to, to, to focus on the flow. Yes. Getting tripped up in your head, man. I know. That's what I mean. If if I had an answer for that, Ugh. I could retire tomorrow. <laughs> it's that's a tough one, but that's why we do all this preparation. And if the rebuttal is that you have to listen and you have to be a hundred times more prepared when you go in than you're ever going to say, just for the rebuttal period, just for the questions and answers. You're right. You're right. You have to know a hundred more things that you're not going to say in the speech because you don't have time. But they, you, they're you they interesting for the rebuttals and also for the book. A lot of people bring me stories to put in their TED Talk. And I say, no, 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 it's just the mountaintops. You can't do that yeah, story. You, yeah, that story's for your book. And they yeah, go. You've said, you've said something, though, that, that really resonates right here. Really sorry to, to interrupt you. No, go ahead. But, but for you... For you to be able to have people be authentic, that authenticity, when it runs through your blood, it connects with your energy. And then now people all of a sudden want to listen as opposed to, hey, my name is Lindy Pearson. I work for Cressa. 
I represent tenants and their office space and I'm losing them because no one wanted to know my story. Can you, can you keep going with this mountaintop? Because this is, this is big. Yeah, the mountaintops are what, how people want to hear it. So I never start out my networking two minute, you know, 30 second introduction or 60 second, whatever they gave you. I never start out with, I'm Amy Donaldson and I'm a speech coach and I, 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 nobody cares yet. So yes. lead with the need. So I start out with, depending on the audience, it, it's a, if it's a very unsophisticated audience that doesn't do speeches for a living, mm -hmm. Right. Like business owners, no, I start out. I start out with, does the thought of speaking, and I'm already enjoying it, right? So they're enjoying. Does the thought of speaking in front of a group like this for more than thirty seconds make you sweat and keep you up at night? Do you suspect you may be boring? Do you want to make? Have you always wanted to make people laugh? I'm Mimi Donaldson, your speech coach. So Great. those three questions. Take care of three people in the audience. One like you who thinks that it's not sexy what you do. Okay, so it's all my mortgage people and my finance people and my real estate people. This the first one is the people who are great CEOs. They've built a fabulous fortune, but they don't want to talk. They're so yeah. it's so nerve wracking. And the third one, the third question: Have you always wanted to make people laugh? I've already made you giggle with. Do you suspect you may be boring? So I've already made the audience giggle. Yeah. So now they know I can do it. And so now I get the people who love speaking. They think they're great, but they've always wanted to make an audience laugh. So it's three kinds of people and three people with three different problems. And they've all come up to, to me afterwards and said, I think I need you. Or now they put it in the chat. They go, how can I work with you? And then I offer them the free 30 minute call. I love it. I love it. So you all this stuff, touch people's problems. Yeah. All this stuff you've accomplished. Do you still, is, is there still more for Mimi? What's, what's more for Mimi? Oh, that's so cute that you're asking. Um, the thing that I realized the other day is a very new thing. And I've never realized before. One of uh, my friends or consultants as well asked me, um, who's my competition? And I actually looked at her right in her face in the camera and I said, I don't have any competition because I had just signed a, a TEDx speaker up who told me I undercharge. What? Uh -oh. Uh -oh. I know. But what, that was so weird because she's like 30 years younger than I am. And she said, I undercharge. And she was so fabulous. And she said to me, Mimi, with your experience, you don't have a competition. And I had never heard that from anyone, like out loud. Yeah, like you somebody have your own energy. Yeah, absolutely. Well, she's going to pay me money. And so I said to this friend and the consultant, I said, you know, I, you have to get to that point. It's the enthusiasm you have. And it's also you've done 10,000 hours, which yeah. Malcolm Gladwell says, then you're a master. You know, you kind of mastered something. Yeah. Oh, I love all of that. I love this conversation. I could talk to you for 500 million hours and years and everything because this is, this is, you know, it's evolving. It's an evolving conversation because you never know who your audience is. If it's, you know, going to be in person, who the people are going to be there, even for like a pitch, you know, pitches are, are tough. Oh. You know? These are first time you're meeting people for me, at least the last year has been 2D. I don't know who's going, who's joining, who's not. And, and um, it's hard. Yeah. Social chameleon. That's, that's a definite buzzword. Um, thank you very much for being on here. I'm so sorry that we can't be here for 24 hours of live streaming of information. But it's okay. Let, let me tell you how people can work with me. Yes, um, please. I think you wanted me to Special tell you that. Gift. Special yeah. Gift. It's a, this is a real gift. People who are on this call, if you email me, it's real easy. Mimi at MimiDonaldson.com. I mean, there's no big things in there. So you email me. I send you my Calendly schedule, and we sign up for a free 30-minute consult call, and I'll help you. I love it. That's how I get my juice. I love and it. so it's so fun to do. And the other thing is put your to email. What I'm doing right now until my course drops in April is to collect 
emails mm -hmm. from my database so that you can be have the offer when it when it becomes available. Where where else can we find you? I know you have your website, oh. MimiDonaldson.com, correct? Yep. You yep. also were social on social media. Facebook. All Instagram. my handles are Mimi Donaldson. Okay. All my handles. I think YouTube is Mimi Donaldson one or something like that. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's Mimi Donaldson one. But other than that, it's all Mimi Donaldson, Facebook, all that. All right. Well, again, pleasure to have you and we will see you next time. Thank you everyone for tuning in to Level Up. Have a great day.